We're live, I think. Hello. I think we are. Welcome, everyone. Hello, Brian. afternoon again. That's right. So it's one year plus one. Plus one. So it's almost like Ask Hands Live 2.0. Yeah, that's right. It's a new, it's a new series. A new series. A new volume. Yeah, absolutely. So what are we going to talk about today? So that's we, episode we, number 41 of the Live from the Studio, actually. Yes. And number 53 in total. Yes. So we need to get organized with number we're going to use. Number 53. Oh, no, I have it a random number. Random number. Six, <laughs> 62. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, live from Plinder Street and Sobbies here. Yes, in Melbourne, and Australia. Melbourne, yeah. Mm. And so I can see quite a few people live already today, which is great. So Tony, mm. hi, Tony. We had uh, someone coming in early, actually. Captain Esman was here five minutes early. So Excellent. thank you very much for that. That's great. And uh, lots of things today. Well, we've got so many things that we were just discussing how we're going to go through it all. So no, I think plan. we've got lots of no, ideas. So we're just going to add lib, yeah? So we just pull up some stuff. We've got it all behind, behind us. us. There's, yeah. a, there's a few new things. Definitely. Uh, quite a few events going on. Definitely. Uh, we had an event that just went past as well. Yes. So the diorama event. That's right. Um, maybe we'll talk about that quickly. We can talk about that. Yeah. First of all. Oh, yes, of course. That's the user car. Yes. What is that? That's it. Let's see. Let's it's see a, it's a car with stripes. Car uh, stripes. Yes. Yep. And um, funny enough, I picked the wrong one from the cabinet. Because I picked the, the car with the white stripes and it was the wrong one. We're well, looking at it and thinking, no, that, that, that doesn't look that. right. No. So we had the it's right been, box it's, and the wrong car or the wrong car and the right box. It does the two. It's been corrected now. So, oh, so now we know exactly. Yep. No Fantastic. So uh, competition. So last week the competition finished up. That's right. So that was a diorama competition. Definitely. Yes. So we had the diorama competition last yes. year, which was pretty popular. Yes. And we did again just now. Yeah. So we had this one a bit longer. It's a three-week one. Yes. And it's really good. We had a lot of multiple entries from different people. Right. So the, the most important thing was to have the work in progress shots Shots. because that, that shows everyone how you progressed. And Definitely. you can see there's um, a lot of work involved in scenery and then also the actual subjects on the model too. So Absolutely. there were three winners. So basically you go first, second, and third. Yep. So third was Ricardo uh, with the uh, invasion, uh, Japanese invasion. Yes. So it was a, a beach landing craft. So he did all the water and the palm trees, which oh, was really good. Very nice. Uh, second one was by Steve, which was, uh, I think he called it Boys Will Be Boys. Yes. So it was a bit of an interesting um, <laughs> a parody yeah. of, a, you know, it, it was a, a not realistic tank because it was one of those planned tanks. Yeah. And so he had a, a female uh, German soldier walking past him. That was sort of interesting with yes. the, um, you know, the expressions on everyone's face. That's right. And then first was also Steve. Um, and that one was um, Ambush, I think he called it. Yep. And that was a, uh, the, was that a Jake Panther? I think it was a Jake Panther going through a brick wall. And that was really well done. So congratulations to those three winners. Uh, well, two of them were the same person, so those yep. two winners. <laughs> and then um, uh, thank you for everyone else for participating. Uh, we haven't put up all the scores yet, so I'll hopefully be getting all that done over the weekend so everyone knows That's right. how they, they, they went. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like yeah. comments and all that coming up soon. Yes. So, we spend a weekend. Actually, you spend a weekend yeah. judging yes. with Warwick. So, yes. yeah, it's a quite a time consuming process, really. It is. It takes yeah. a bit of time to check out all the photos and uh, yep. some you know, objective type uh, you know, scoring. So yeah, well, it takes time to actually see and compare all the different entries and That's right. just make it all fair and. Yep. Brilliant. Brilliant. So we'll have another competition in the next few weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. we'll, yes. we'll have a bit of thinking. So if you have suggestions, just pop a message on uh, on, on the chat. Yep. So we will we can help us to decide what, what the subject is going to be next. That's right. Could be something we've done before or could be something totally, totally new. Absolutely. Mm. So talking about events, there is a lot coming up. Well, there's an event coming up this weekend, isn't it? There is a big event coming up this mm -hmm. weekend for RC Racing. So it's called the uh, Yakima Pro Arm, which is a, a one-tenth, roughly this size, buggy. Yes. Off-road racing yep. at a kilo up here in Melbourne, and uh, that will go for two days. So the weather is so-and-so, but looks like it's improving. So chances that that event is going to go ahead. So it's going to be two days of full-on racing. It's really good because it's a really nice concept, this particular yes. race, because you've got the base of the pros, who are the sponsored guys. Yes. So they'll be racing only with themselves, That's and right. then the amateurs will be racing with themselves. So yes. there's, there's a better chance of actually doing well yep. within uh, the school group. Absolutely. Yeah. So it'll be good. Uh, other events. Uh, what else we have? We have uh, so, uh, the Velodrome, actually. We haven't spoken about the Velodrome for a long time. We haven't. So Velodrome too. That's uh, when's it? September? That's, that's yeah, September. September, I think. Yes. Yes. So make sure you're working on your projects. Yes. If you're doing crazy things like 
a rocket car, then you better start now. Yeah, start experimenting and definitely and get it worked out by that time because we want to see it going around. And then um, we've got the Model Expo. Model Expo, which, well, uh, finally. Yes, I missed out last year. It's usually on June, so it's been uh, pushed back a bit. Yep. Into uh, October now, That's so right. it'll be. Should be all fully open by that time, I expect. Hopefully, yes. Mm. And then everyone's going to bring out all their lockdown builds, and it's going to be a mess. Lots of one, lots of models, yeah. lots of. So it'll be big competition. Mm. So at the model expo, you have uh, traders, but you yes. also have lots of. People. I, I guess the idea behind the expo is to have uh, this competition. It's yes. massive competition where everyone brings in the models and they join this competition that yeah. is in under multiple categories. There's quite a few categories. A lot, a lot, a lot of categories. Yes. So virtually anyone who's going to fit into one particular. Category, so it will be quite fair and, and uniform. That's right. Uh, when it's time to judge, yeah. So I encourage anyone to join. Definitely, yeah. It's a good experience, and if you go around, you have the opportunity of seeing probably hundreds of different models. Oh, there would be hundreds. Make it yes. planes, make it drama, make it mm. sci-fi or, or whatever. Mm. So it'll be huge. So yeah. um, definitely pop by if you can. Yes. And uh, next week we also have a live show. We have two live show next week. Yep, we're going to run two live shows on Thursday because yes. Friday is a good Friday. Friday. Yes. yes. So we're going to have our usual live, number 42. Yes. But we're also going to do a live streaming with Nicholas Lee from Yerkimo. Yes, so that's going to be very pretty, nice streaming. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Definitely. So we're going to talk about a new BD10, so touring yes. car racing. So if you're new to racing, it will be a great opportunity to uh, to jump online and have a look what one of these cars looks like. And, yes. And also all the implication behind it. That's like right. The amount of design and, and mm. tuning that you can uh, that you can actually do it. Well, like put in a lot of time on the track. Absolutely. And this is actually our first time to have an international guest. Absolutely. Yeah. So make sure you join in, say hi, ask any questions really. Mm. They'll be they'll be great. So what else we have? All right. So I think we have this one. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So, so we showed off a bit of this last week. Now everyone knows about Plugger, the um uh the W class comical train yeah. that we've had. And he's been going around Melbourne. Absolutely. And he's been busy. He's gonna be here, there and everywhere. Um, but everyone's been um, uh, asking about a static model because not everyone wants one that works on a track. So it's not much point getting a Kato chassis um, to run it on a track if you don't need to. So we've developed the extra parts. So Warwick's done the uh, the base. So we'll just get the overhead there. So you see the base here. So it's going to be a little plinth. So you see that it has chamfered there. And then you've got a couple of rails. And then the tram will just sit on top, and you'll be able to see there's um, a brickwork pavement on there as well. So it's got that detail there. So once you paint it up and, and do a bit of weathering, they will look it's, really good, actually. They will. They'll look fantastic. And then over here, we've got the uh, the main body of the tram. Yep. And then there's the additional blank chassis, and then some scale uh, bogies to make see, it more realistic. What was it there? Yeah. So I'll just bring this up to focus. Maybe uh, too far away, too close. Oh, here we go. Okay, so you go. So a few extra bits and pieces just to to make it um, That's right. complete as a, a kit. So there you can do your full tram kit in a yep. in a you know. So you need to assemble it, glue it up like you do on a normal kit, really. Yes. So that would be probably our first model kit, really. Yeah, first full uh, kit. Full kit. So mm. it will come um, in a box like this. Yes. So we've been working on the packaging. So that can be standing out. Yep. Um, so your some basic information here, some generic information. Yes. And okay. we'll have full-on instructions as well. Yes, so that's we'll right. Fully uh, ready to go, I guess, in the next probably two to three weeks. Mm. Got a few things. So that's just a first mock-up of the box. Yeah, it's getting pretty close, though. Very close, yes. yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's pretty exciting. And um, obviously, this is made in Melbourne yes. and designed in Melbourne. Yeah. So we am proud of that, aren't we? Warwick, mm. here at the Hearns, in the Hearns team, and yes. we made down here as well. So made in Melbourne and Melbourne Tram. Yeah, so this plugger. So you can have your own plugger. And you'll notice that on the front, we've just got the uh, the generic sort of uh, green and gold finish. But they, they came with a whole heap of different ones. So Definitely. you can paint it up in the uh, in the brown, uh, which is like the dining car. Yes. Uh, or there's a, another sort of ready brown, which was used That's for right. the uh, city circle some years ago. That's right. And, yeah. and I guess you can do anything with it. Really. That's you can right. make it any color. Mm. As That's is right. the model, the, the idea is that you can just get very creative and, yeah. You can even do some of the art trams of the day. That's right. Yeah, there were yeah. quite quite a variety of different kinds. So at this point is open to any kind of modifications and addition, really. Yes. So mm -hmm. and so that's the first hour design. Yeah. Trams and good. first of many. Mm -hmm. So we've got quite a few other in the works. Yes. Very good. Let's see if there is any guests on the car yet. Don't see 
I don't see any guessing yet. Not yet. Let's see if we get Tony. Tony normally is always quick at guessing the car. So we want, the, we want the make yeah. and the model and the yes. color. So the special name of Definitely. the color. And the year, I guess. A year is would be year? good. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. No, there isn't. Yeah. Well, well, we'll make up a year, really. There isn't any year. Oh, on, yeah. On, there will be one. I will work it out. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, very good. So if you have questions, guys, just pop it in the comments. Mm. Otherwise, we're going to start. We've got quite lots of new products today. Yes. Where should we start? We have the Phantom. Yes. Oh, well, the is pretty cool. This is really special. We won't leave it to the end. Mm. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to do an unboxing. Yes. Go. Diecast truck. Should we do a diecast truck? We haven't yeah, done one of those. Yeah, we haven't done one of these. Long long this is really new. So this is from Highway Replicas, and so this specialty is making uh, trucks of this particular scale. It's one of the sixty-four scale, and they're all Australian um, thing. So they always got this uh, this road train. Here we go. So you got multiple. Let's move that up here. There we go. I'll we'll just spin around. Make it easier for me. Look at Oh, that's right. Here we go. Okay, so we got a prime movie here. Yep. So this particular one is uh, who's this? Uh, can you read it from here? That shows how good my eyes are. Uh, can you read that? No. Nah, yeah, oh, that's, that's real fine print. Goro Transport, is it? Goro Transport, yeah. Yep. Here we go. Anyone can read. I need my bank visors. Very nice, very nice little model. It's actually mm. quite detailed. Yes. Um, I don't know if he's got an opening bonnet, I don't think so. Um, well, they look really impressive when you got um, both of the um, that's right. trailers together. It could be really long, obviously, as mm. you can imagine. So there's a proper full-on road train. Yes. You have two tankers, and, and, and occasionally you can get extra tankers if you want to make it extra, extra long. That's right. Yeah. As you can see, it's a traditional. There's a bit of uh, hinge in here. So. Full on traditional detail uh, diecast model. They've done a really good job. They always come out with um, quite iconic colors and such. So this one's a um, uh, a Red North uh, tanker trailer. Yeah. So you can see the detail is quite nice. Got all the uh, all the piping here, the connections. Yep. You got the spare tires and spare wheels. Spare tires and wheels. So it's got a good weight as well. So. Once you have it all together, hmm. uh, it will look really good. Yeah, let's see if you can help this up. Yeah, that just sits in there. Sits in here, and yeah. then back to the one at the That's front. It. And if you go, you build a full a full uh, road train. Hmm. And and the uh, prime movers are very typically Australian type. Yes. Yep. Definitely. We've got a question for you guys regarding the truck. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Captain S Man's asking, is it a Kenworth? It is a Kenworth. It is a Kenworth. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So it's got the little Kenworth actually printed on the side of the bonnet. As you can see, it's probably very tiny up here. And you see on the front, it's got the typical um, uh, rue guard. Yeah. Because, you know, when the kangaroos get in front of it, uh, they need them to bounce off, and they do bounce off those. Yep, definitely. And so definitely Kenwood. Hmm. We also should be receiving some more Drake trucks, actually, in the coming, in the coming weeks. That's right. Yeah, they announced some new, new, new trucks. trucks yeah, yeah, absolutely. So... Yeah. And Drake is very nice, a little bit bigger. A bit bigger scale, mm. yeah. Yep. Oh, it's a surprise what we get and when we get them. Yes. And they go really, really quick. They so do. Yeah. if you like trucks, just keep an eye on our social. We'll, we'll post a couple of pictures. It's a in. secret release, isn't it, with Drake? Very much so. Secret to us for sure. Mm. Okay, running direction. So we'll put this away. Yes. Got Peter joining the line. Hi, Peter. Peter, if you're keen, you can have Nicholas Lee joining live next Thursday, actually, at 4 p.m. So I know you're a racer. So... That'll be perfectly good for you. So very good. Um, oh. So someone is asked, asking if the truck comes with a with a kangaroo. Maybe we could add it in. Well, we could. Actually, we, we, could. we could actually we print could some of those really big ones. Yes, it would be like one of those prehistoric kangaroos. Yeah, we, or we could uh, we could produce some as Hearn's workshop and we can oh, we include could. them. Well, we should. That'd be quite funny. Uh, we got some guesses on the car. Meanwhile, so HQ Monaro early seventies. Oh, it's pretty pretty good, isn't it? I think we're very close. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. All right, I think so. Yeah, all right, I think all so. Right. There's few right. there's few more letters, I think, here on the uh, yeah. The red, actually, but... okay, okay, let's extend it, right? So we know it's an HQ. Yes. But which HQ is it? Yes. And we still it's... need the color and the makeup. 
Has anyone said the maker? They, they just said it's a Monaro. Oh, okay. All right. So we did, we almost, did, almost. We did the car maker as well. Absolutely. 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 So we very close that. Very yes. close. Good. All right. So we've done the die cast. Yes. Shall we move? You want to do mix it up a bit? Let's go plastic, okay? Plastic. All right. You go for the super special. Yeah, yeah I like this. Mm. I like this. So. Look at this beauty. Brand new release. This arrived literally yesterday. And it's a very good release from Ecolary. It is. So this is part of their series. They do quite a lot of uh, large cars. Yes. Um, and this would have been uh, one of the early Proto kits, which they've taken on uh, after Proto folded quite a number of years ago. Right. And they've uh enhanced it so yes. they added a photo wedge and some fresh decals uh but the original molds are still very very clean very nice so how about we do a quick open box i would say so have a look at all the bits it's beautiful i mean you're talking about area of cars this isn't like um it's this long enough in the history of the car that Definitely. they've worked out the basics of it and this is where they're thinking about let's make the sucker go really really, really fast. fast yeah absolutely so here we go we actually have some uh, die cuts or racing bentley coming oh. of the same era from techno model so in a few yep. weeks we should have some really nice bentley right okay so shall we jump on the top camera yeah what why not think? all right let's move over here so italy is actually manufactured in italy yes oh here we go yeah here we go all right so we got the manual there wow okay so manual's nice. really you can see that it's really thick if i have a close look at that in a sec all right, let's look at this video. All right, so we've got uh, a bag here full of uh, wheels. Spot wheels. Yep, so they're multi-piece. So you get the uh, original spoke book. And I'll try and get rid of the reflection. The spokes on these are actually molded quite fine. Some people actually cut out the spokes and put in really fine wire. You oh. could do that if you're a real masochist. You don't have to, then, because I think it already looks pretty good. Looks pretty neat, yeah. Yeah, and then on this side, you'll see some of the silver parts. Okay, and these are actually the spring type damper that's used on the front suspension. So there's multiple uh, layer and uh, they're just a uh, friction damper inside. And then you've got some uh, uh, leaf springs, so front and rear leaf springs, and then other little bits and pieces which are probably going to be on the engine. So then you move on to this quite nice sort of semi gloss chrome sections. Okay, so you've got edges of the grill here, uh, and then you've got the, the uh, rocker covers. Uh, for the engine, uh, you've got some, I guess, the oil caps, uh, the horn, uh, some sort of control rods, yep. and other bits and pieces. I'm not too sure what they are, but there's some really fine, look like uh, plug connectors. Yep. So that's your chromium bits. Over here, you got a little bit of the uh, uh, bodywork. So you got you got your your wheel mud flaps, uh, other body components. You got the headlights. And then on this side, actually, you can't really see much there, but I guess you'll see just a little bit here. That's the actual engine. Okay, so engine with the, the gearbox. It's probably about, so about 15 centimeters. Yep. So you can just get an idea of just how big that is. It's actually a 12 scale model, so it's yes. actually going to be quite large at the end. It is. So overall, it's going to be, I don't know, it's, it's about a foot. Yeah, we've got, yeah. We've got a body here, actually. Or I so, the yeah, that gives you an idea of size, but you'll see how it's multi piece. So this is the front section. And here's the driver's compartment, and then the, the bonnet is out to here. Yeah. Now, to give you an idea, here's the bonnet panels here. And so all of these can be lifted up so you can have access to the engine. Yeah. You see all the, the fine yeah. detail. And then here you've got the, the rear end, so this will be the fuel tank. Uh, and then you've got um, uh, other large body components too, so the firewall. Yeah. And then clear parts here, just here, for the, uh, the lenses and also for the, uh, the windscreens. And then over here, you got your final bit of plastic. You got the interior. So here is like the tub. You got the uh, the seats that go into there. You got the uh, dashboard, uh, the big exhaust that goes out one side, steering wheel. And then underneath here, you got the actual rail for the chassis. You might be able to see this one here. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, so it's just like building the that's real, the length of the real, car, actually. Yeah, that's right. So that's, yeah. that's decent size. And then of course you got other components here. You got the cross braces. For the chassis as well, and then at the back is uh, the diff for the uh, the rear drive. Okay, so let's just leave that there. Now, apart from that, you got this rubber bag tires. here, which is the rubber tires, which is really neat. I mean, a really nice surface detail here Definitely. on the treads. So you've got five there because there's a spare which yeah, is strapped on the side. Um, yeah, actually, I actually missed it before, but in one of these bags is actually a selection uh, section of it looks like uh, leather. 
Oh, right. So you cut it out for straps, and that's for holding on the, um, the spare tire as well, and also for the bonnet. Over here, we've got a bag of really fine screws. And then you've also got all the lines here, which is vinyl, for doing the uh, spark plug leads. And then there's some fine springs, which are copper. And then there's actually two two sizes of um, uh, vinyl in there. Yep. And then this one here, which is sort of new. So you've got a section of um, photo etch. Let's sort of come loose. Move that. So you've got the, uh, the front grill as well. And some other bits and pieces for the inside of the uh, the chassis, and then you finish that off with some freshly printed decals, which are super thin. Yes. So very fine. Yes. Really nice. So all in all, this is a very lovely kit. I'm still waiting for my how do you pronounce it? Myth. Mythfully. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mythfully. Are you going to get one? I am. Yeah. That would be really good, yep. actually. So I've got, I've got a diorama planned for that one. I've got a figure ready for it already. So I'll wait for the kit. So you have a few projects happening, have you? Uh, my, my projects keep growing. <laughs> oh, is it still part of the same project? No, you have at least two. Uh, I've got three or four three at or the four. moment. Yeah, yeah, I thought you had a few. Yeah. So I've got to get back onto my Mac project, the yes. Notarize one. Yes. Because that, that's the most important one that I actually had planned for Expo. So that's right. Yeah. So we'll get that going. But yeah, got a few things on. So yeah, that's really nice. There's a, there was a little comment we had in chat. Um, <clears throat> yes. Someone said that uh, the plastic looks similar to, I believe, a Protar kit. That it is. The person's yes. building. Yes, that's right. So it is a Protar kit that's yeah. been reboxed. It's just been modernized a little bit. Yeah. But all in all, the molds will be the same. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Very good. So nice. I wonder which Protar they're building. Probably that's, the same one. That's uh, right. They said it's a one night scale Moto Guzzi. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes that's yes. right. That's actually... On pre-order already, I think. Yes. So Protar did a whole heap of yeah. different bikes. Very nice. All uh, mostly Italian, I believe. Yes. All the Moto Guzzi and Alfa Romeo. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Hmm. Okay. So, what else we have here? So, got some more questions? Uh, no, no. We got this comments on the on the Italeri. So, moving on. Should All right. We go for another car. That's very special again. Should we go for another plastic kit? Oh, we can do. Look at that. This has been in the works for a little bit. Has been. So they first announced that last year. Yes. And they had um, uh, test builds of which uh, they had some professional photos put yeah. out. Look fantastic. Um, quite often, we will always wait for Tamiya's 24 scale car yeah. of the year because they always do a premium car. And this is the one for this year. That's right. So this one is like building the car from scratch. So if you can just see, actually, I might get the top view camera. Here we so go. just on the side there. You can see here, this is the internals of that particular kit. So you're basically building the whole tub wow. and all the framework, and then you've got the engine hanging out the back. You can see all the discs on the ends. And then over here, you can just see the options in the paint schemes. Yes. So let's try and get rid of that. That's a traditional McLaren orange. Yes. I think it's got this darker blue. blue. Yeah. So somehow they've described this as a European spec, and that one's a US spec. Interesting. So they have so, different, different details on. The rear actually the rear end here looks a little bit different so I have to see yeah. but it could be the exhaust or the diffuser maybe different yeah it could be there could be some options actually hmm. so obviously this is a fully licensed mclaren and senna kit it is so, so you'll see the mclaren yeah. uh licensing Definitely. tag there with the number so mclaren is very strict on uh, licensing kits yes uh, as well as the the senna <laughs> brand so to have mclaren and senna yes it's uh it's a big exercise Yes. Uh, I've, been, I've been speaking to some of the diecast manufacturers who explained mm. the process that you need the full accreditation from McLaren, yes. but also from the Senna uh, Foundation, I think it is. Mm. And they are very, very careful on how they manage uh, the brand and how the brand is utilized. So yes. obviously, to me, I went all the way to get a full Senna accreditation to yes. the, that logo up there. So yes. really a big, uh, a big task mm. to go through this process. Um, but the kit looks fantastic. It does. It's, it's fantastic car, isn't it? Yes. We have the resin model of this, actually. That's right. So, That's right. So, yeah, it's quite different from the, the previous designs, isn't very, it? Very much it's, so. it's much more aggressive kind of car, really. Mm. Yeah. Tony seems to really like it. Does he now? <laughs> <Take> my <laughs> money. Yes. Do we All need to right. look inside it? Should we? I think we should. You want to have a look, Tony? Sure, we'll have a look inside. Let's see if, what, what, the, what the opinion is. We could open one. 
So it's ready. No. We'll give him a couple of seconds. <laughs> Let's give it two seconds. But I think BJ has decided already that he wants to have a look inside. Oh, what was the answer? Oh, sorry, it's getting opened. There you go. Yeah, okay, it. Tony approved oh, it. it. Fantastic. I've got a yay. Okay. Uh, okay, let's slice them open. Guess you've got to say that satisfying cut of the plastic too. So oh, I love this bit. This three cut. And then you got that nice and clean. That's it. That's how you open a kit. That's how you Professionally. Open. Yes. All right. He's cracked. All right, there you go. Lots of parts. Lots of parts. All right. So first thing that you see stands out is white bits. So this is one of the parts that I really like about Tamiya, that all the bodywork is molded in a white. So white is a, a pure color, which um, would take any, any color you want to put on top. Yeah. So if you want to do fancy sort of mixed colors like chameleons and stuff, well, of course you do different base colors. That's right. But if you're doing straight colors like the ones that they show you, then white is perfect. In any case, if you start from white, you don't have a problem. No, that's right. Even Absolutely. if you need to go darker, you can always go darker. But yes. if you have a, a gray body, yes. you always need to go back to white before you get to another color. That's right. Or if you want to do yellow. Yellow, yeah. Yeah, that's all it's always be possible. Yeah. yeah. So you can see how it's all multiple um, uh, panels. So unlike um, some of the simpler car bodies, which are all molded in one, you can just see all these little door panels, three-quarter panels, um, rear uh, wheel arches, they're all separate. Yeah. Okay, so it's just one sprue. All right, and this is an amazing part. So this is actually the body monocoque. It's all molded in one piece. Okay, so you've got the main monocoque here, and then there's the big massive rear wing. And you see that this is the front section. So this here would be the, uh, the luggage compartment. Yeah. And then the engine goes to the back, sits in there. And I mean, this would be pretty similar to the way the real car is. Yeah, is definitely. Cool. And then the side here, you might be able to just see the uh, the shape of the window. And then the smaller sill here, which is a very classic racing car type, supercar type, because the only part of the window comes down. It's a very intricate, actually, body compared it to basically any other, any other kit. kit that we do. Yes, that's right. And you see all the venting at the back as well. And that, that's really impressive. That's right. So that's, to me, actually stepping up the game, I think. That, that's amazing. Okay, so we've got that bit. All right, we've got a section of um, clear parts. Clear parts. Yep. Clear parts, obviously, as you can see, as I'm looking at the screen, you can't see any of it, right? That's how I just explained it. So we've got the windshield. We've got the rear engine cover. And then you've got the side windows. Um, what could be there? Engine covers, maybe? That would be the engine cover, potentially, yeah? Yeah. It will be the side. I think Actually, that's something that's, happening. That's, a, that's the engine cover, isn't it? Uh, the, the center has also a panel on their doors. Oh, yes. So that could be the door panel on this one here. Yes, yes. And Oh, that's right, because it's so you can see past your leg. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got the uh, lights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's actually quite a large sheet of clear parts. Okay, now you get into... So as we're pulling these out, you can see how traditionally Tamir it is. So they've always got the white parts. And then you've got your silver parts, which are like mechanical bits, and then black parts or maybe another color for interior parts. So here you've got mainly chassis components. So you've got base here for uh, your wishbones here. For that, that'll probably be rear suspension because the right. engine will sit here. Sitting there. Yep. Uh, you've got your selection of wheels. wheels. Really nice, these. Yeah. Those spokes. You've got your disc brakes here. It's quite nice to notice they are ventilators because you've got all the small perforation. Yes, so that's very right. well detailed. Probably close impossible to see there. But yeah, maybe. It's and then you've got your um your hubs here, yeah, the steering hubs because the steering will work. Uh, exhaust. you've got some sort of cover, yeah, uh, yeah, your exhaust pipe. Oh, there's a difference, there's different types of exhaust different pipes, different types of exhaust pipes. So yeah. It's probably the US and European different yeah. versions, yeah. And then you've got your engine, so we've got the gearbox and the main engine uh case, you've got the, the side here, um, and then you've got some braces. This will most likely be part of the engine uh bracing on the rear um uh deck. You got some individual arms here. Uh, this part here for uh, cooling. cooling. You got your radiator. Front. You got the top of the engine here. So rocker covers and stuff. Uh, this part don't really know. There's probably Through the gearbox, perhaps, or, or is that actually no? That's end? exhaust. Is that exhaust, exhaust pipe coming out here? Oh, it could be. Perhaps. It's pretty chunky, aren't they? Yeah, they are actually. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so your silver bits. Okay, this bag you've got your tires. Okay, okay so you've got super chunky tires on yep. the rear, narrow ones on the front, and then there's a bag of um, polycaps as well. Because traditionally, to me, 
they use uh, play caps inside so that when you oh. push a wheel in, they still rotate. Wow. Yeah. Here we've got a big massive sheet of black parts. So here you've got the internal tub. So you've got your driver's side, passenger. Uh, you get the supports here for the engine. So this is very much like the side of the box that we yeah. showed before. So these would be all the carbon fiber uh, chassis bits. You've got the interiors of the doors. That's you've right. got the uh, uh, dashboard covers, uh, the tops of the engines. There's your rocker covers there. Uh, you've got the front end. Yes, the intake, the air yes. intake here. And as you can see on the doors here, you've got this part here that is clear because then you're going to have the clear part. Yes, the clear uh, window effectively. Yes, that you can see through from one side to the other of the car. That's right. That's, that's quite special. It is. Well, you can see everything that's coming. That's like right. You can see the cat that's walking next to the that's car. That's it. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 50 um, cents. <laughs> you got your uh, your two racing seats, and then that'll be part of the diffuser. Yeah, the rear one. And yeah. then and that's, that's for the front. Yeah, the front part. Yeah. And then you've got the uh, exhaust over there as well for the engine. It's sort of mixed up bits and pieces. This is the, uh, the wheel covers ah, there as well. Yeah. All right, so it doesn't end there. Look at some more bits. Two more. All right, so more white bits. Uh, not, they're not all bodywork. So you've got some calipers here. Uh, but the rest of it looks like bodywork. It's yes. got lots of little bits hanging off it, doesn't it? That's right. you got all these events. It's a very aggressive racing car. It does have all the fins and different kind of air intakes all yes. around on the front and the side of the body. Yep. Steering wheel right there. Yep. Yeah. All right, and then you got a final set of black bits. I mean, there's a lot of bits in this kit. Oh, so you've got more diffusers. So this looks like a front diffuser. Yes. Uh, the base of the front. So I think basically this is all covering up the, the base of the chassis to make it totally all the, flat. All the front. Uh, I think these are the front, the, the fins. Are they at the front? They will have to be. These little ones. Or oh, could be on the wings, perhaps. Even. Oh, it could be. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you got some sort of uh, deflector blades there. Yeah. Shock absorbers, drive shafts. They're all individual, isn't it? And there's a full kit. It is. Yeah. And then you've got your um, your steering rod right there. Yeah. So you can see how it's got the C sections there because they just clip in so you can actually change yeah. the steering. Yeah. Uh, you got more wing panels. Uh, what else is recognized? Oh, I think you got uh, radiators right here. I think I even see a uh, top of the dash up there towards the middle. Looks like oh, the here. Top, top steering wheel dash. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be. Yep. Yeah, nice. And, and then we pretty much, that's all the passengers. So you got decals here. So here you've got the uh, reflective um, uh, metal uh, stickers. So they're mirror finish for the, uh, the rear vision mirrors. Then underneath here, which is a bit hard to see, it's underneath the protective uh, uh, tissue is the Water slide decals for the interior. So you've got the uh, all the dials for your right. uh, cockpit and dashboard. Um, and then there'll be all the name tags for the outside of the car as well. Here you've got some extra information, so nice color print. So you've got history of the car, so that's in Japanese there. And you've got different color two, options. Two main colors. And yep. to make the exact color, they've got the actual recipe here. So how many drops of a particular color. Same with the, uh, the orange. We do use the lacquer paint because that will be probably something airbrush yes that's right so yeah they have like a paint yes so um, they got lacquer it paints. and airbrush it to get best result yes and it's nice to have the actual photos here too because then you've got photographic reference yeah uh to give you a guide of how to um paint up and then here's the english part here so multilingual so you've got uh, german english and french and french yeah yep and obviously japanese which is over here uh and then you got your manual so won't take too much time, but I'll just flick through it because we'll probably do a proper open, um, uh, so, yeah, yeah, another day. So it's a pretty standard, very clear manual, step by step. Everything's all numbered, and they use all the Tamiya paint numbers. And that's it. That's that's, that's a fantastic new McLaren Center. That's pretty, right. Pretty, pretty so many parts. So it's like mm. building a real car, like almost building like a remote control car at this point, where yes. you have. All the functional components here, we are very close to actually replicate the construction of the rear wheel. The car, yes, that's uh, that's definitely different. I think that's part of the um, the Experience. fun as well yeah. because th this you don't often see a lot of car models which are this comprehensive. That's I guess right. the closest thing you get to this would be a 12 scale motorbike, true. But for 24 scale, th this is impressive, definitely. So, brilliant. There you go. So, some comments here, yes, noticing the complexity of this kit, yes. It's definitely complex. It's definitely it, it, very detailed. I don't think it'd be you know be difficult, but if you follow the instructions, 
I mean, not too bad. Just need to take your time. That's right. Instead so, of being a week work, it's probably oh, a bit longer. A bit longer than that. Yeah. Normally, I we use the shell and the chassis and click them together. Yeah, not this one. Not this one. Yes. So, I mean, Tamira are famous for their fit. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't think, I wouldn't really recommend it for a beginner, but if a beginner wanted to tackle it yeah. and just go step by step, the instructions are the best you can get. Yes. So you still be able to uh, complete this. It's just that when you've got so many bits and pieces, yes. you just want to make sure that you test fit it beforehand Before, Yes. because everything relies on the last part to make sure it fits together. Fit together. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, very nice kit. Brilliant. Excellent. All right. In the meantime, uh, we do have a question, but it'll be great for the RC section later on. Okay, okay. Carlos. So just so you guys will know for later. Okay, sure. Yep. Okay. How do we go with this? We still got no, no more no, updates. No bites. Oh, no bites come yet. Come on. Come on. All right. Well, we're going to have to. All right. Let's get it away. Can, can you sort of read it? Sort of read it. Sort of read it. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, what are we going to look at now? Uh. Shall we go for the Mini Z before we go into the Mini Phantom? Z? Okay. So we're going to Mini Z and then the Phantom by Kyosho. Mini Z. So this is a very exciting release by Mini Z, specifically for delivery. Yes. So it uh, it is a drift, is I think. Well, it would be a drifty because it's an all-wheel drive yeah. one. And so shall we have a look inside? We can do. I think we should. So I like the retro look of this. I agree. It's got the old school HKS. Uh, Skyline livery. Yes. And I like the, the actual colors they've used. So let's just pop them out. There we go. There it is. Nice jump on this side. So one thing I've just noticed through the window here, this is uh, the receiver. I don't know whether you can see it through the camera. It says, I HSS. So that's oh. really important because you can pay out and or bind this car to a yep. Futaba radio. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, so some of the Mini Z have the ability of being paired or binded to a uh, Futaba radio, which yep. means you don't have to use the radio that comes in the box, but you can yep. use your, uh, the radio that you use every day for your racing for sale. Yeah. So, yep. uh, that's really a plus. Uh, and as you can see, the level of detail is phenomenal. So, mm. They reproduce the wheels uh, yeah. and all the different body details. And this HKS kind of livery mm -hmm. um, is very much um, something that people have been waiting for for some time. So we received quite a few of those, but mostly they are already sold out. Got a couple of left. It's really well done. I really like it. Pretty well done. The attention to detail on the it's, bodies is well yeah. done. Yeah, let's see if you can see the rear end here. You can see all the lights here. Yeah, it got a good gloss on it. Definitely. But there's a lot more to come in the box, actually. Yeah, so this is the other part of the box. So the main part is the radio control unit, yeah. which is underneath in the bubble wrap. But you get a few little bits and pieces. So over here, you get some specialty tools. Yes. So you got the covers for the battery. I guess that's the spare, is it? Uh, probably is, yeah. And then there's this is probably the pinion gear tool, because that's you can right. change the, uh, pinion, the yep. gearing. And then there's another little tool here, which probably helps you take off the wheel nuts. That's right, yeah. And a couple of spare little, little rings. And then this is a nice packet. Of course, get some extra packet. gearing. Yeah, too. spare gears and the pinion set. So pinion set to change gear ratios and then different spur gears to go with it. And this is a whole stack of them. Um, the brilliant. Yeah. That would be good fun. Yeah. So these cars are quite tiny. They're really good for indoor use. So yeah. I mean, if you have these cones, yeah. it's quite nice. You can put a small layout in your That's right. office, perhaps. Yes. Uh, or <laughs> living room. Yes. And have fun with a cat. Well, there's plenty there. There's 20 of these there. Eh? So you could be able to lay out something really nice. Definitely. And then you've got the controller. So a controller. It's like so. Very simple, straightforward controller. So that's yep. really good for anyone who has not played with this kind of remote control car before. Yes. Keep it right. simple. You've got your steering, a couple of dials here for. Um, on the trims for the trim, so you make yep. sure the car was front to straight line. Yep, and you just need some batteries. That's right. So just some AAA batteries, and then the car itself takes AAA batteries, batteries as, well. as well. Yeah. So I like as you we just suggesting. So these run on traditional AAA batteries, so you don't need any rechargeable or whatsoever. You can just go to your supermarket and buy some some normal batteries. So yes. you can take these on holiday without having to take charges and any of other tools. That's and, right. Uh, 
to be a really good fun fun game I believe additionally this is a particular library from i think in 1993 i think it says on it uh, race yeah you're correct yeah something like that hmm so that's the r32 it was very GTR. popular at the time so all the major um uh model builders actually made a kit of this so to me that's right to me headline in 24 scale and also ready control the 10 scale yeah and it's nice to see that you know little ready controlled Portable Easy. version, yes. Yeah, and it's nice how it's all wheel drive because Skylines are all wheel drive. I think that probably goes this way, does it? No, no, I think you had it right before, but they probably the bottom part is not fully so in. Yeah, oh, there you it. go, a little bit of gentle persuasion. Very good. So, Carlo, I think, as um. Guess the car correct. This is Olden HQ GTS Monaro Glacier White. Ah, but but is there a but? I think the box mentioned about the stripes. But I, oh. think, I think that's correct. Oh, I think that, that's a given. That's, that, that's given. So, oh, well done. That's the one. That's the one. So, we, we managed to guess the car. Let's pop it under here so you can have a good look at this. This is very new, actually. We received this this week, and this is from Classic Collectible. So, it is. This company's been extremely active mm -hmm. to release probably two, two or two couple of cars every every couple of months, really. Mm. And they keep producing classic um, Australian cars in one eighteen scale diecast. They do. It's got opening, opening bonnet, opening doors. Get that open. Uh, the boat is opening as well. Normally the antenna from the radio comes here. Always to be very, very gentle, but it does pop up. You can see here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it just goes back and goes back in. Yep. And I can think you can open bonnet. Let me Has see. Has bonnet got one of those special buttons on the bottom? Sometimes these have ah. a press button on the bottom, which is right there. So if I press that, it helps it go up. Aha. Uh -huh. And then you there put it go. up. There we go. Okay, so there you go. Let's and see. fantastic engine details, actually. Yeah, it's impressive, isn't it? Oh, good timing for Brad. Brad is yes, ready. He's, he's popping in. We've got an added, added, added addition there. It's a 1973 model. Uh -huh. 73? Mm -hmm. That's it. We've got a, a year is, as well. Is that correct? Yes. There's a is spare it? wheel. Actually, I just noticed something here. On the bottom of the boot, it's got the safety sticker. Can you just see that, that little sticker there? Oh, that's right. Wow. So, so that's probably for using the um, uh, the jack or something. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. That's, that's a very too. impressive detail, actually. It is. Oh, I wouldn't have noticed that without just looking at it. So yeah, maybe a bit more of the interior, but it's got a lot of the packing foam in there. So the interior is well curated as well. Yeah, it's into the steering wheel and all yeah, the dashboard. And of course, steering actually works from the steering wheel itself. Yeah. I would turn it upside down because even the the um. Bottom here is really well detailed. You got the exhaust, which are actually white colors. So it used mm. to be all black in the past, and now yes. they start adding detail here. So you got the exhaust of, of a nice gunmetal kind of. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it really has a, a sort of tarnished look to it. Titanium kind of color, and then you got all the engine details as, as they used yeah. to be in real life. I like how the chassis is a, a, a satin finish, and yeah. then you got the suspension, which is a gloss black. Ah, yes, good point too. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Actually, well detailed. Very nice. So, and this is from Classic Collectible. So, well done. Hmm. So, Carlos absolutely loves it. By the way. So, Carlos keen, and Carlos has a very good question I read just above. So, oh, really? as Brett gets ready, talk about some RC stuff. Um, Carlos expressing some concern about uh, Yakumo uh, kind of changeover in, in oh, drivers right. and so forth. Yes, yes. In. Hello. My name is Chris. Hello. How are we today? He's back. Good. Fantastic. Good. Are we ever? Yes. What have I missed out on? Have we guessed the car yet? Yeah, the car is done. It's a holder. Yeah. Always the car's it's too easy for you. By the time I get in. Yeah. Always it's. Because otherwise you will guess it too fast. Not allowed to be any sharp things, you know that. No, you're not. Yeah, put it away. But live it with me. Wow, what a week we've had in uh, the RC yeah, so world, especially. Cool, no? isn't it? Yeah, it Carlo was just long. asking above here. Let me find it again. Here we go. Um, it, it's, it's showing some concern about the changes in the Yokomo. Mm -hmm. um, as a business, as a team, 
Yep. Um, oh. And he's asking, you know, what we see the support. So the, the communication with the with the company has been really solid. Mm. Yeah. Um, specifically in recent in recent months, actually, we get uh, updates weekly mm. and uh, phone contacts. So it's all uh, going quite well. I feel that there's a little bit more support now. From, That's right. From Yokomo. So um, they're asking us like what what we want, aren't they? Yeah. It's been so they're really trying to change it to suit us and what our customers want and that sort of thing. So there was a huge shake up um, and a lot of people, a lot of people parted ways and a few new heads on board. So definitely, hmm. you know, but that's looking good. The off-road program is very solid. Uh, parts and cars have come back in stock just recently again. Mm -hmm. So that's positive. Um, we're also going to have a live show uh, yes. next Thursday, Carl, if yeah. you want to jump in. Uh, it's more for the on-road guys, but yeah. it's good to see uh, Nicholas Lee, one of the main Drivers, actually, yeah, yeah, Yoko. he's going to be talking about the new um BD10 BD10. LC. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, uh, at Yokomo, it seems all going quite well. It's, it's been a bit of a change, and, mm -hmm. and looks like they and will... they're still making fantastic cloud yeah. trading products, aren't That's they? Right. I mean, their, their stuff is just it's beautiful to assemble, it's beautiful to work on, mm -hmm. um, it always performs very well. And, um, yeah, like I said, we've got the new BD10 LC or LCR. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think that's going to be really class leading, class okay. leading car in TC, and we've still got the YZ4 SF2, mm -hmm. yep. which is kicking butt wherever it goes. Yes. I'm sure we'll be um, on show again this weekend at the Kilo Pro Am, yes. mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and the YZ2 DTM3 slash Cal3, which mm, still right. seems to be at the pointy end of the the Some 110 buggy yeah. field. Mm, absolutely. So it's all looking pretty good. So looking, looking good. So for they they moved the offices uh, and warehouse, I believe, near uh, within the Yatabi yes. complex. Yeah, what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, and it makes so, sense. That's right. Mm. And so that's actually really good. It's a huge space. We visited it three years ago. Mm. It's a massive space mm. and had all the different drifting and uh, on road and off road trucks. And yep. they apparently added a new building. Mm. She does all the you know, offices. You even had the joy of um, test driving. driving on the track yeah, there, didn't you? That's good fun. Oil. It's good fun. That's definitely, definitely yeah. been on the bucket list. I reckon. Did absolutely, few, did a few jumps and smashed would have been a bit. a bit like going to the ranch back in the nineties. That was always oh, uh, yeah. absolutely. a dream. Yeah, absolutely. a dream. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So, so now talking about buggies, yes, yes, I've been uh, feverishly, I suppose you call it, working and and assembling a um, a hot bodies vehicle. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have been following the the Facebook page, the Hearns Racing page, but this is the the EPA. The uh, E819 RS that I've been working on throughout the week. Um, yeah, and it's come along fantastic. Now, this one being for my being for myself, it's got a few hot up parts and uh, set up options that have been available. Well, you need a bit of bling, don't you? Need a bit of bling, don't you? You went all the way there. I yeah. can see that already. So, well, it's amazing what a packet of little orange shim kit will do. Yes. So, that was that was a three dollar. A four dollar part a bag of 20 shims it makes it pop um, really. yeah yeah it's nice and i do like to do that on on carbon fiber fittings actually because i feel it just gives that little bit of slip between your their, their head and the carbon fiber itself yep a little bit more purchase yep um so yeah so other things that have gone into this buggy have included that the exotech steering brace here which is a um a lovely bit of of bling it it's sort of solid, opens it? up very solid i don't know the exact dimensions but it would have to be What's a billet you aluminium? Know, yeah, yeah, it's have to be like five mil billet aluminium piece, wow. which is um, you know, two step anodized coated CNC machine. So that replaces the hot bodies um plastic, plastic. braces there. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, a plastic probably isn't the worst thing to have there because mm. it allows a little bit of given stuff, yeah, but yeah. That's just hard to pass up. That looks just really, on looks really alone, really you know. Yeah. Um, and it also exposes the um the Exotech uh, steering uh, servo saver and bell crank system that's in there. Wow. Um, and that's that's double ball race. It's really hard to to see. Um, but yeah, that is beautifully machined as well. I can sort of see here. See the arm there. Yeah, yeah. So there's two piece servo saver assembly. Yeah. Um, and the steering bell crank is um has got small little ball bearings into it uh as opposed to just the alloy bushes, bushes. that the that the other ones that the hot bodies part has now the the bushes are good generally speaking for for strength and reliability um so having bearings there is not it is more of a performance thing um but it's something that i'm going to have to pay attention on 
cleaning, cleaning. Yep. making sure it's lubricated, make yep. sure that they're not collapsing because as soon as a little bearing will collapse or something, then it's going to completely throw the steering out. So that, yep. that's an interesting point. So when you add this kind of finesse, then mm -hmm. you also yeah. need to look after them more. So there's pros and cons. Absolutely. So reliability could be compromised if you don't yes. actually service it. Yes. So uh, in, in some areas, I've, I've made the car stronger. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the bell crank system here is definitely the, the bearings are not in there for strength. Yeah. But they have taken a lot of tolerance out of it and they have increased the smoothness on yes, that. It's just crazy. Smooth. Yeah. Um, you know, like it just, and there's no, there's no slop in it at all, which yeah. is just really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is the, the P1 Performer shock cap yeah. and honeycomb bladders. Um, and that's just a hot up go fast bit offered by P1 Performer, um, reinforced bladders and stuff. Um, now most of the nitro guys run what we call emulsion shocks, um, which is a whole probably hour topic on itself. Yep. But this is the Performer uh, reinforced bladder for the shorter races. I've been told that it's the way to go. So that's that's gone on to all four shock absorbers. Um, other parts in the build where the hot body's hard composite arms so i mean it's still plastic um but it's obviously got more carbon reinforcement or fibers in it i suppose mm -hmm. to make it make it stiffer and give yep. more control yep. now again that's going to offer the the pro of being uh firmer to the feel and maybe offer a little bit more feedback and control of the of the vehicle but it's also going to be brittle so if i mm -hmm. go on cartwheel it's not going to probably give and and bend as much it's yep. just going to snap yes that's right so yeah. there's pros and cons to that. Yep. Um, the standard hot bodies, um, plastic arm inserts on the front, mm -hmm. which have been super glued in. Yep. Again, they're meant to offer that balance of um, give and support that it needs in the front. Um, and then we make our way around to the, the rear end of the car. And you can see these little carbon fiber trims here. That looks really good. Yeah, they look mm -hmm. beautiful. I, I would put carbon fiber all around if we could. Um, and these are a locally made product. Mm. I could have gone with the the uh, Hot Bodies parts because they do make beautiful carbon inserts as well. But this is supporting the local the local uh, business of Berserk RC. Mm -hmm. So that's a Berserk product in the arm there. Again, that's with the Hot Bodies hard composite arm with a um, Berserk hard insert. So apart from that, it is just a typical a typical build. That's come along. We saw it last week. Hmm. And it's, um, it's effectively, yeah, that's where the instructions will get you to. Yeah. So apart from now, I've got to put in the servo, which is going to be um, held in with a beautiful uh, CNC machined Exotech uh, servo mounting system. Um, I've got to have the motor in there, uh, the receiver. Uh, we're going to have a P1 Performer shorty mounted. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and the, the buggy will be right to race. Um, so yeah, so as some people say, oh, it's done, it's done, it's done. For me, it's probably realistically halfway there. Yes. Um, you know, fitting up the, the electronics is not that finicky, but still takes a little bit of time to get it right and mm. neat and, and nice. Yep. Then we've got to put a setup into the car. So put it on the setup station where we'll do the, the cambers and the toes and the, the droops and stuff and get it all nice. Um, cause we can only do that really once it's, once it's at race weight. Yeah. Um, then after that, we can balance the chassis on yep. the corner weight scales. Then after that, it's body painting. Um, mm -hmm. And that can be as simple as, you know, half hour with a rattle can to yep. get out the airbrush and realistically spend a full afternoon, spend a full, a full afternoon and evening with the, with the airbrush, which is probably what I'll do. Mm, make you it know? look nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Make it look neat and tidy. That's the project. Yeah. And the, the bodies are actually pretty well protected on these. Like the... The front and the rear, the wing takes a hard time, but the bodies themselves are actually pretty well protected. Yeah, they don't they don't cop it too much. It's pretty beefy, isn't it? It is very beefy. It That's a very nice a, body mount, uh, mm. a wing mount. Yeah, there's quite a few other manufacturers actually use yeah, this one. Use Once you the drivers from other manufacturers they use their hot bodies uh, wing mount version two specifically, which yeah, is uh, the high you one. option ten mm -hmm. plus ten mil and standard, so you can yep. adjust it too. Yeah. So yeah, so I know I know that we did the build recently with Richard's car, but this is the a second one. This is for me to run around on and, and have fun. Hmm. Um yeah, so this is yeah, hot bodies this week, like I said, and, well, and next week we'll be focusing on got a, a BD ten underway, a new LCR underway. Hmm. Um so I'll get that ready for the show with Nicholas. Yes. Um so we can have a chat 
and he can hopefully Definitely. point out some things on, on the car that I've done wrong or things that I could do better. Because, um, yeah, if anybody can make a, a Yokomo go fast, it's, That's it's that man. Yes. You know, he's one of the fastest men in the world. There's no doubt about it. Yes. He can just about make those cars talk. Absolutely. You know, so awesome. far, far from where I am, definitely in the talent. Now, what else have we got to talk about? Have you talked about the, the drag tyres yet? No, no, we haven't. Wow. We're almost running out of time. But, yes, let's go up to drag tyres and the crawler tyres, perhaps. While you guys are doing that, we've yes. got a Carlo further said it's great to hear that Yokomo communicating so well. It's mm. going to be good for them. And yes. thank you so much for updating with him. Fantastic. You're welcome. welcome. Thanks for asking for that. Yep. So, so here we have sweep actually. We, we received sweep this week. Um, and the one I've got in my hand here, this is the absolute zero voodoo belted slick. Yes. Now, it might seem funny, but nobody so far, I don't think, has made a successful belted tire for no prep drag racing. Yeah. Now, this is a class that's really starting to take off. Um, it's a big belt, isn't it? And big it belt. is a big wide belt in here. Um, and, the, pop it up here? and the advantage. Yeah. You can you can see it's an aramid fiber construction belt. Yep. Um, and the beauty in having that is obviously, as these wheels spin up and generate quite fast RPM, they can the centrifugal force will make the tire distort and grow. Yeah. So what this and it makes your um, they they go quite narrow, so it makes your contact patch quite quite small yep. and mm. and less grip. Yep. So what they do is they put a belt in it, and that I cannot stretch that or break that if I try. No. Um, that's obviously where it's joined up. And it's a beautiful overlay, beautiful construction. Um, yeah, it's a super soft, sticky tire. Yep. So they can put a really soft chewing gum style compound tire um, and then put the belt in there and it'll hold it together and save it for you. I was just so, trying that on the tabletop before. I mean, it's, it creeps well. Yeah, it's, oh. not, it's, not, it's not going anywhere, is it? Nah, it's, it's phenomenal. Oh, so these are, these are new um, and the, the drag guys are really excited to try these. Um, so hopefully as, as quick as this weekend, I think they're running drag. So Definitely. we should have some feedback so early next week. Speaking to Sweep just last night, they explained mm. it is actually a very complicated uh, product to produce. Yeah. So you can only make 70 a day. Yeah. 70 a day. 70 yeah. a day. So it's, it, it's, it's really Imagine high it's quality. Imagine it's a slow, really slow cook as well with the soft tire. Absolutely. So it's low process. And so um, we received the first lot this week. There's yeah. a lot more on order, but you need to be patient. Uh, yeah, and they haven't come. they haven't given us a number rating or whatever for the for the tire. It's just called a red, isn't it? It's yes. a red a red compound. Red, of the, yeah, which is what right. they use in, in their crawlers. crawler tires. That's right. Um, red and gold. So they use red and gold in their crawler tires. Um, so yeah, so these slicks, fantastic, super Beautiful. soft and sticky, ready well. to hit the track. Speaking of crawler tires, mm. Sweep have just released released this tri lug. Is that how we pronounce it? The tri lug yeah, so. one point nine. Um, now this is a gold compound, which is a super soft compound yeah. for sweep. for sweep, yeah. um, and it's coming with a um, a memory foam or it's an open foam insert. It's probably not. It's probably partially memory foam. It's a really nice tacky, well um, feeling. Yeah. yeah, really nice control in that insert, which is fantastic. Um, and you can see that this one here does not have any red. Um, any belting or anything no. like that. It's got these ribs here to give a bit of carcass support and strength, but it is really stretchy and That's tacky. what you want in crawling. You want it to grab it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. these things really don't go any faster than walking speed. No. Unless you're behind the wheel. Oh, uh, quite impressed. Right. <laughs> I'm quite impressed with these teeth. Tiny. Yeah, well, these, on the sides. Yeah, well, that it's should really, really help you get up in banks and stuff, isn't it? Because yes. these really put a lot of effort yes. into that. So yeah, this is awesome. a really well-designed product. Very aggressive. So yeah, that's not very a scale aggressive. type. So we all just the definitely yeah. crawling for extreme yeah, for crawling. Extreme crawling, probably comp crawling. Yeah. And they'll, they'll look cool fitted up. I can't uh, wait to get some. They're going to come home with me tonight. Really I think there's going to be a, yeah. a blue Defender ute that's going to get some of these. Absolutely. So that will definitely be on my car. And uh, the 3S will definitely test them out. But these will be yeah. fantastic. So we'll put stress on a crawler. I really think that <laughs> – I don't know. I really think that these um, are sort of a game changer, both definitely. of these products. Mm. Definitely. We've Definitely. got a game changer here for the no yep. prep drag races, and we've got a, a game changer in the in the crawler tire. Um, and coming into our winter, I mean, I don't know. That's when I'll do my crawling and in going around and in the mud and that sort of thing. When it's too wet to take out the other ones, you can always rely on your crawler to hmm. to get your RC fix. My tires are still full of water, actually. <laughs> so my, it's got my, half my the crawler went River into full submerged mode, and about three weeks later, we're still getting water out of yeah. the tires. So if you ever go in water, just you need to 
Okay, you beat locks, pull them apart, let them yeah. dry because they actually store water. They're very well sealed, actually. Yeah, and I mean, water comes in and stays I can in. I see Master's, Master Joe having another service to do. Yeah, so. I think so. <laughs> I, I think I, think, I, think <laughs> I might have to stop selecting first gear and locking the diffs. And... Yeah. And what else have we got to look at? Have, you, have you looked at my mini's head? Yeah, we, we have. It's done. Oh, wow. We haven't, we haven't looked at the Phantom. I think the Phantom is, is going to be the end of today's show. Oh. So the Phantom. And yes. It's going to be. Well, do you want me to leave you guys with the Phantom? You, you can do the Phantom. Oh, I can do the Phantom. When wow. Phantom. Look at this. Let's go on this. So when All was right. this released? Tell me, BJ. You have been around in this industry longer than probably anybody in Australia. I don't know if I, I remember. Was it 1902? I would say that they were pretty much wearing Hessian jocks when this came out. This would be Hessian late, jocks. This would be late seventies to right. early eighties. I'm sure Master Joe can confirm that. Which uh, camera are we on? Uh, yeah, it would have been late seventies. So well, let's do proper unboxing. So, all right. what is it? Well, have a look at it. So it's, it's a, a Phantom, one twelve so scale pan car. Yeah, made by Koi Show. But it's um, four drive. Four wheel drive. That's four wheel drive. And that one makes it pretty much unique. Yeah, and the other thing is, look, apart from being twelve scale four wheel drive. Um, and a re-release mm. is that it's actually chain drive. Yes. Ah, yes. Um, you know? Yes. So chain drive is something that went out definitely in the early to mid eighties, probably the last car to have it, um, you know, in 10 scale or 12 scale, 10 scale was Yokomo Dogfighter, wasn't it? Which has now become mm. that YZ4 SF2. Yeah. Yes. So it was called the Dogfighter, it had a chain drive. But anyway, this is from Koi Show. This is a pan car, 12 scale. Yeah, chain drive, four wheel drive. Yeah. So let's have a look. So Simon, yeah, it's actually a really good customer of ours. Yeah. Simon has given us the opportunity. To, yeah, no worries, boys. Rip mm. into it. So yeah, very nice after this one today, you know, run gonna, it and then send it back to him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to run it, paint it, send it. We'll butcher it, mask right, it. Let's go top camera. So let's have a look what's in there. Opening. All right. Wow. Twelfth scale Pan Am body. Isn't it? Classic scoop. So this is classic it. scoop. Yeah, Even got a full, driver figure. Yeah, full open. Now, open to be cockpit. honest, they haven't changed great a great deal, have they? No. That said, I'm hoping next week we've got a new one to talk about. Yeah, I think so. Hey, there's a new one here. That's yes, right. Yes. So here we go. Beautiful body, cockpit design, fantastic. They've taken the liberty of pre-mounting the tires. Now these are a foam construction tire. Um, they'll have hex mounts front and rear as opposed to normal 12th scale which will have the little bearings in the front yep because of and the drive. three and the three um screw axle in the back if you will the, yeah the, the front front associated screw style. yeah yep. you associate the style wheel so yep. you can adjust the diff and change the tires around and stuff yep. so that's really good actually it looks like a touring car thing so anybody with a touring car sander can true up tires for their phantom <laughs> then we have a box that they've taken the, the liberty of putting everything in one bag Yep. Which is a little bit disappointing because I always want to bust into it and have a look. <laughs> but uh, I'll leave that for Simon. But it looks like we've got a FRP chassis, I want to say. Yeah, it would be a, be a, a that's fiberglass. Where that's where all the suspension happened on these particular Yeah. Cars. The front ends were solid on them. Yeah, yes. front end solid. Yep. And they had a, they didn't have a diff, did they? Direct drive rear end, I want to say. On this one? I don't know if they put a diff on this one. It does so, have a diff. It does it. definitely have a diff. There you go. Looks like a little torsion style drip diff. So the, the front end would probably have maybe one ways or a locked axle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. There are some build photos. I think I'm going to build one of those. <laughs> You're going to build yeah. one? It's it's not news. We, we've been talking about this for several months. Really? Yeah. When, well, there when, we go. Like, you were not here when we received the first lot, were you? Yes, I was. Yes. Yeah, 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 remember yeah. we received stacks of it? Yes. And I put mine away and then we had to sell it. Yes. <laughs> I was gathered for about two months. Well, I'm there's another recovering. one here. I think, I think it sounds like a good deal. So you build it and I'll drive it. That's done. That's right. Yeah. Beetle. Done. Oh, that was easy, wasn't it? What a fantastic uh, instruction. I bet it's it's all original from the 70s. I like the, the color. This green. Isn't this green it color, retro cool? It's, yeah, it's cool. really special. It's also very similar to your um, to your Defender, no? Yeah, true that. I could do it. It would look good on the shelf. Body here. <laughs> right on your, look good on your shelf next to your Defender. <laughs> Have a look at this little sticker here. Team oh, Boy Show Super Racing. That is fantastic. It's some of the alloy bits in here. Very much. Yeah, so. for sure. You got your, your engine mounts, you got your front hubs. You got well, the back then drive. the kits were, it was harder for them to make 
plastic molding, yeah. injection molding than yes. it was for them to do machining. magnesium machining yeah. or you aluminium, know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Aluminium casting. So yep. a lot of the kits back then the were glass like and cast, metal, weren't they? Yeah, the Carbon fiber didn't exist. So no two plate, it's all one chassis? All one chassis. Yep. Because I guess if you've got too much movement at the back, you've got a problem with the chain drive The, the chain front. drive on the front. Yep. Yeah. Really looking forward to some belt picks on these. There will be some soon. Very good. Nice. Fantastic. So, I like it. I guess this is the highlight of today. Yes. Very exciting. Wow. We can put it back. Okay. Yeah, we can put it back. Oh. Yeah, Rob. Maybe, maybe Nick will get one this time. Oh. Yes. Rob, Rob. We'll put the instructions in. Oh, yes. Built one? No, it hasn't built one yet. He says he's got the first, but yeah, he still hasn't built it. Oh. Oh. I'm surprised Tony P never got one. Your profile picture, Rob, is actually the original motor, the Le Mans oh. motor that was actually part of this kit. They originally. actually did a re-release of their Brussels yeah. motors, didn't they? Uh, I believe so. We, we, they we, would be probably rarer them. than the kits. Yes, that's right. Because they were this green colour as well, weren't they? Uh, Le Mans. They the, did a brushless Le Mans. Oh, did they? And they did them in this sort of greeny yeah, colour too. I remember it. Because I think, yeah, like Nick said, back in the old days, the Koisha kits used to come with them and you could option up yeah. your Le Mans motors. The gold motors. 240, 240 480, 360. 360. What did the number mean? I don't know. I want to say wind, but I don't know. The I number actually stands for the number of minutes of racing I was meant to do. Really? There 480 is four minutes. Oh, really? What was it? No, 240 is four minutes. And that yes. would have been 480 back 480 is eight minutes for... 1200 SEA. Because you probably get enough battery to go in mean, It's just that That's minutes. right, on a 12 <laughs> battery. <laughs> That's right. I'd love to time. have, yes, I'd love to have some that. time. Yay. All right. Well, That's it so for today. I think. I'm out. We are all out, I think. I think we're all out. So we're done. Oh, the aluminium body mounts? Yes. Class. Let's do this one more time. <laughs> there you go. It Good is there. beautiful. Lift it up Fantastic. Yeah, there we go. That. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Simon, for letting us open the box yes, and, and dig around all through it. Yes, and touch we'll it. promise that we'll get it out in the mail yes. early next week. Absolutely. So, fantastic, all right. guys. So we're at the end of episode number 41. Well, yeah. okay. So, everyone, thank you for watching again. So, make sure you join us live next week. So, we're going to have at 2 p.m. the usual live. Yes, That's right. And at 4 p.m. The live a, with uh, Nicholas uh, Nicholas Lee. Lee. Yeah, for so we'll a separate show. Yeah, yeah, for Team Yokomo and talking about the BD10. That's yeah. right. And Yokomo in general. Hopefully, we get some mm. ended, some racing anecdotes. Yes. It's not just going to be all serious. So, no, no right. spares yet. Um, if, if, if you're after anything particular, let us know. But yeah, I don't think we're probably planning to carry too many spares. I don't think many people are going to actually run this car. Yeah. But if you're after me. something, we'll, except you are going to run mine. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that sounds like a deal. All right. So, guys. As usual, we're going to have a YouTube video coming out every day. Yes. So jump on our channel, uh, comments, uh, subscribe. Mm. Uh, there's quite a few things coming out. Um, quite a few unboxing, a couple of tutorials. Yes, absolutely. Mixing it up a bit. Um, we've done some nice things with uh, with some green stuff this week. So you yeah yeah playing with some green stuff and blue stuff, green and stuff and blue stuff and brown stuff. Right, and brown stuff. No, different, not brown different, stuff. different colored stuff. different color stuff. Yeah. So, Before we sign off, I would like to touch on the the Kilo Pro Am. Ah yes. Uh, yes. We're that gonna is going to be tomorrow. a huge event. It's going to be, I think, the biggest off-road event in Victoria. For some time, yeah. Event. Yeah, you're going to miss weekend. out, aren't you? I'm going to miss out. Nick will be there in full force. Yes. Won't you, Nick? I will be. Bright and early. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> I'm going to go racing, straight tonight. <laughs> racing on Saturday, racing on Sunday, yep. selling the shop out. And working on Monday. Good. And working, coming back. And Covering for you. On Monday, that's right. Yeah, on holiday, so thank you for that. That's right, you're welcome, more than welcome. So um, that's going to be fantastic. So good luck to all those competing. I really hope that the uh, the weather gods play nice. Absolutely. It looks Everybody like it's going to be fantastic. okay. The track is phenomenal. It's going to be the first bigger off-road event since COVID. COVID yeah. yeah. Yes. So people were just chomping at the bit. Absolutely. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we had Bendigo on road last weekend, which was yeah. washed out on Sunday. Mm. But nonetheless, it was still fantastic to go up and do a regional event, do mm. some racing, or do some practicing, see some faces, mm. say hello. Yeah. So that's half the event. So hopefully, the off road boys get to um, catch up and do it all this weekend. Absolutely. Mm. Good luck to all those. And uh, yeah. See I'll you next. See you next time. See you yes. next week, next Thursday, actually. Next, next Thursday. Thursday. Because yes. Friday's public Friday. Friday. Thursday. Thursday. So. Keep in touch to social media throughout the week. Yes. And thank you for watching. Have a good weekend. Thank Thanks you. Again. See, See you later. Bye-bye.